Beep boop, intro music. Welcome to Cypher Sci-Fi, where we normally explore how and why. What do we call this? What are we doing here? This is a... Uh, Quarantine edition? Where you yearn for other people's interaction? Not even... Cor- I Isolated isolated bullshit edition, right? <sighs> and he's Ben Haler. I'm Christopher Peterson. I'm Lee Colbert. Hey, Colbert. Hey, Chris. We didn't watch a movie. Nor a TV show. Well, I've watched multiple movies. Oh, did you? As I'm sure everyone else has. I didn't. Did you, were they podcast material? Because you could have. You no. could just tell me about it. No, we could have the conversation. <laughs> I've seen bits and pieces of the movie with the kids. Uh, of movies with the kids. Here's the thing: not to cyber sci-fi like normal. We didn't watch a movie. Didn't watch a show. And usually, Colbert and I have a conversation every day for coffee. It's it's heavily work related in the morning at work, but well. that's usually my. <laughs> I, I mean, promise. Very loosely, heavily <laughs> <I> pro- <laughs> work related. I promise it's work related in general. But in general, that's when I get off my my things that I want to tell Colbert and in self isolation here. But since I don't normally get to, we don't we haven't had this conversation for the past two weeks mostly. Now's our chance to do that, and we can include everybody else in it. Especially because I've just been too. I wanted to say too busy to prep for the show. That's kind of half true, but the other half is I just didn't have it in me. Mm. See this last. Okay, if this were a normal week and we didn't have this, and I had to guess what you're going to talk about, it would probably be Vim. Uh, <laughs> I like what can Chris talk about on yeah. a whim without prep? <laughs> Something's happened in the Unicode world. I have discovered and or look this neat thing with Blender. Uh, and yeah, those are usually the top three. You go way too. Uh, a little too hard. The problem is our whole routine has been heavily disrupted. So now now is our time to catch up. And we're gonna catch up with everybody while we're at it. We have a new supporter, Colbert. It's it isn't it like a podcast uh, renaissance? No. Everybody's Cause... not nobody's commuting. Yeah, dude. Podcasts our numbers have dropped off. Everybody's numbers have dropped off. And some shows, some shows have a certain sort of thing where this is their time to shine. But overall, everybody's losing out on drive time. I was going to say, you can only listlessly scroll through Netflix and like stuff so many times. Colbert. What are you, stupid? (laughs) Of course you can't. (laughs) No way, dude. It's hard. There's a place for podcasts. It is when you're walking the dog, you're doing the dishes, you're driving to work. It's a lot of commuting and doing stuff outside a lot of the time or exercise. Who's going to the gym? Well, you've seen the memes about how everyone's a marathon runner now, where the people wearing the dogs out, using them as an excuse. Like, nope, taking the yep. dog on a walk. And I think it's just yep. like being dragged on the side of the road. <laughs> that was my excuse. I just got the kids. They ju- I was like, I want to go outside. I have nothing else. I want to go outside. I have nothing else. You guys will learn how to ride bikes without training wheels. And now I got them going and we're running around the block. I run next to the kids. They're going pretty fast. Their top speed is my jog because they're tiny. Everybody wins. That'll last about a week. What? And then I'll be too good at running? No. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Chris's ability to breathe well and exercise versus kids' ability to pick up skills. Mm, yeah, they might get better at bicycles faster than I can learn how to breathe. Breathing is not my strong suit, unfortunately. So this is what happens when you disrupt the routine and we're not together on Tuesdays to watch a movie. I got through another half of an episode of Picard, and that's the most I've done towards this end. It's all them kids you have. So I took some notes about the stuff I wanted to tell Colbert, and instead of having coffee with him, the very heavily work-related coffee that we have every morning, uh, I've saved them for now. Hey, you know, work work does get done. Hey, Colbert, what's up? <laughs> this is pretty good. <laughs> I have had a lot of coffee. I, f- I decided that I like caffeine. Again. And when your days are a hazeless blur, who knows if you're addicted? <laughs> exactly. <sighs> so how you been, Colbert? I know a little bit. We do work together. Been pretty well. Avoiding. Lots of Zoom meetings. You and everyone else enjoying uh, custom backgrounds. Actually, no, uh, not too many Zoom meetings. Really? You Are you operating in the studio or are you in like your 
somewhere. I don't know what else is in your house. I've literally never been to the other parts of your house. I'm, I'm in my actual office using my computer that I hadn't been using very much of, but is now getting quite a bit of use out of. How is the, have you used custom backgrounds? Uh, I have a custom background, which is, it's a scene from The Office where they do the uh, the talking heads. I, I'm not an expert on it because typically I I join with my audio mute it and my video off and I use the push to talk because I really dislike when people just leave their audio on all the time. And I go poop. <laughs> <laughs> That's video. I don't understand what sort of person lets that happen. The people that forget and they have technology and they're on a tablet or phone and they can just walk around and do stuff. I don't forget Colbert. They have no they have no audio control discipline. <laughs> it's it's offensive. Although the people that live alone don't have to have that concern. Oh, maybe that's okay. Or if you're alone during the day or whatever. Uh -huh. I know people probably get into a mode of I'm in my house. These are house things like I can just walk around and do stuff. Yep. I can walk around here with no underpants and no pants. <laughs> yeah, just my house. tilt your phone down. <laughs> <laughs> just don't stand up in front of the camera. Yeah, yeah. No, that's the thing people get used to. What I really wonder about is how much this will affect the working world after. Like jobs that are remotable, how much will they become more of this? Double-edged sword, Just right? as baseline. You have the people that are using this as an opportunity to prove that work from home is not only viable, but can be... Uh, an actual beneficial thing to have. And you have other people that are just sitting on their couch watching TV, blowing off work, <laughs> and doing the absolute minimum. And you could replace your background in Zoom so people don't even know that you're sitting on the toilet playing yeah, Candy Crush. And, and it's really mixed because some people are complaining like people have just disappeared and I can't reach them now. <laughs> I'm having a lot of meetings that just no one showed up and didn't say anything. I'm ha I've had a couple of those. Oh, yeah? Not with people at our office, I should say, if any of them are listening. Like in tech, or at least you would assume most of the people are prepared for work from home. Or because we already do. Tools. Yeah. There's a thing you and I, that's worth noting. Like we, we're already used to doing this. There's let, there's fewer Zoom meetings, maybe. But in general, like I work from home fairly often just because I have kids and it gets weird. It was not a big stretch. But now the timing of, is such that right before the self-isolation thing hit, we moved into a house that has a yard. And uh, a scary room in the basement, which is functioning as an office for me. Every call I've gotten off with new people, they're like, whoa, nice scary room. It's not that scary. It looks like a workshop. It's, well, actually, here, let me show you my view. This is what it looks like when I'm on a call. Bare light bulb in the back. Ceiling <laughs> okay. beams. Yeah, there's, there's <laughs> less workshop area in view. Just unfinished room you're, that you don't want your I'm location sit, shown. I'm like, I'm like on my knees so I can reach the microphone in the table. Uh, but... If I stand up like I'm on a Zoom meeting with my headphones, then yeah, it's like there's there's exposed healing beams, light bulbs, uh, uncovered light bulb, and it looks like I'm doing ransom videos. But I get by. And that's why I went looking for like a green screen like we've purchased before, uh, maybe a pop-up one. And for some reason, they're really expensive, probably because everybody's on Zoom meetings. See, just like all the other, I need stuff for people immediately. I liked it better when everything was normal and I could have that thing the next day from Amazon <laughs> for super cheap. And I also could leave the house. We're leaving the house. The kids are pretty happy running around the neighborhood. There's like no cars because nobody's driving anywhere. Like I said, with the bikes. So it's going pretty well. And the rabbit. We have a rabbit, everyone, who didn't know that we had a rabbit. Well, he's got to be like in spring now. He is. Well, yeah, since you, you, you were here once before everything shut down, right? We closed up the backyard, like shored up the corners of the fences and stuff so he couldn't escape. And now he's just running around. He's got a whole backyard to munch. He is the happiest rabbit I've ever seen. Good luck tracking him down if uh, he ever gets out. He got out once because of a human error and not naming names. And he was just in the driveway like, sup. <laughs> and then we gave him his crunchies and he came back inside. <laughs> he doesn't know. But he's like, he's running around. He's doing popcorns. Zoomies. He's just a very happy rabbit outside. Munch, munch. I think he was getting a little stir crazy too because we didn't have him out at all while we were getting everything ready. You'd think that being isolated at home right after moving into a house with all the stuff to unpack would mean that we have like a really well set up house. It didn't work out that way. It's almost like, like there's still a lot to do. I'd imagine the two burdens that you have to take care of during the day. Probably what do you mean by, <laughs> you mean by kids? <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Oh man, that's what I'm saying. Like, it's hard to say that I'm busier because I played like 40 hours of Skyrim last week. I'm guessing it's probably way higher. <laughs> I'll get to this. <laughs> I I'm feeling stressed. So, you know. Oh yeah, no, I thing. mean, anxiety is a real thing to deal with and you need coping mechanisms. And you know, my video game routine is like once every six months or a year, I'll be like, I'm going to play a game a little bit. And then like, I just disappear for like two weeks. It's funny because you complain about games that are too long. Like this game took more than 15 hours to beat. And now you play the game that you can sink thousands of hours into. I know. And and I have, have. I've sunk hundreds because I know I played it like six times and never finished it. But here I am again. Uh, My orc, my orc two-handed barbarian guy, battle mage. So like, I can't be that busy if I'm doing that at night. But it's kind of, you know, I'm doing it at night. The rest of the day, I'm like a teacher and a cook, and I'm at work as well. It's kind of hard. So the kids, the first couple of weeks were iffy just because the school wasn't ready at all, and everything was kind of a shit show. But as of the third week, it was like, it's pretty decent. Then Google Classroom, everything was kind of in a flow. They're expecting like a hour or so work out of each child who are in um, kindergarten and second grade. Now that we have a little bit of routine, it took two weeks to get there, but... Not that bad. And as a bonus, they are both getting more adept at computing. Not computing like we do computing, but they're using computers to do their work, which is not a thing they ever did before. Everything was on paper or crayons and shit. And now the two of them are using a drawing tablet to draw on a PDF and like exporting and saving that. That should pick up pretty quickly. Yeah, it's good. I'm glad I have the drawing tablets on hand. You shouldn't have to do this, but it's like we have worksheets that are printable, not PDFs that you could fill out. I was going to say, who has, who has like a printer? Can you imagine people that have printers and they print it out, have the, the kids do it, and they scan it back in? I think that's what they're looking for. And tell you what, I don't have a printer. <laughs> I've ever, I've, I haven't had to print something. Or a scanner. Do you have a scanner? Outside of like taking a picture on your phone? Oh, no. Anytime I scan something, I just use a uh, photo scan on my, on my phone. I do have an automated document feeder scanner somewhere in a box. BT Dubs, brother brand stuff, works really well on Linux in general. Anyone who needs to know that. Do you have a printer in your house? No. And do you have a printer with ink in your house is another question. I think I have ink for a printer, but no printer. That's backwards. That's not usually <laughs> how it goes. <laughs> I don't know. You know, maybe I wonder if they're if they're expecting people to do the print and photograph and send routine, or if they're expecting people to just have like iPads and do it on there. Because it occurs to me, maybe that's the thing they're looking at. Although that's still... Although iPads, writing on iPads has gotten a lot better. No, I'm saying it's good, but like, I don't have, oh, first of all, I wouldn't buy an Apple device, but second, I don't have, well, how much does an iPad cost? How much is an iPad Pro? <laughs> <laughs> I happen to have two Wacom, 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 Wacom? How do you say that brand name? Two drawing tablets that uh, I was able to plug in for the kids. So you've been working as per usual, and are you just like, lots of movies and video games? In what way have you been spending all that other time? It's not, wait, although you don't, neither of us like party. I'm not sure what to say. Like we don't go out and do stuff really that much. So how much is this changing your, your daily schedule? Well, now Tuesdays and then the recovery from Tuesday. So it's like two nights that you've got back. Oh yeah. So I, we do, we do hang out on Tuesday and it tends to be late. So I'll tell you what, I've been sleeping better. Not that I have trouble sleeping, but I've actually just been going to bed and waking up like at a good time. Like you, like you have a schedule? Yeah. Well, because the kids are like, they're like, oh, I'm hungry or whatever in the morning. And I can't just ignore them. So I have to like wake up and feed them. <laughs> and you and can't just let them do their own thing because you're like, food is precious now. I don't want to have to go outside. It's dangerous. <laughs> if you eat all that food too quick, yeah, we have to go back outside. Ain't nobody got time for that. I know. It's been interesting. So I said, uh... Been able to do more longer term hobbies, like the popular thing of baking. I've been doing that during the day because I have, I can just take a break from work. Do you have a sourdough starter? You know what? Sourdough, it's too wet for me to mess with. I don't want to go through the hassle of it. Do you need a proofing basket for sourdough? Because it seems like it's beneficial. No. For making sourdough bread, or at least high hydration bread, being all wet. Oh, that has nothing to do with sourdough necessarily. But most of the stuff I see ha- are high hydration, and they're all gloopy, and then it's all oh. pain in the butt. Yeah, I I already had my sourdough thing. I was surprised you didn't get that going. Just like every other person, 
That's all I see on Twitter. Man, maybe you gotta feed it. You gotta take care of it. It's not hard. And you know, the main thing that people should know, like public service announcement, is that it's not hard to get it going either. The maintenance is super. Which I've been I've been finding proofing bread in my house has been an issue. Oh yeah, you run your house like a ice cave. Colbert lives on Hoth, basically, because his body temperature is 110 degrees. I've run into a couple instances. I'm like, why is this bread not doubled yet? Why is this what's going on here? But if you're not cooking anything else, I just turn on the oven to make it temperate and uh throw the like turn it off first. Yes. Don't leave the oven. <laughs> but but get the <laughs> oven <laughs> get the oven to be warm to feel and then and raise it in there. <coughs> I haven't made that much bread. I already make uh, a baseline level. I guess it wasn't that exciting because it's already a thing I pu- I'm used to pulling off. I was the, um, so we, we've talked about my chef history, but I was specifically for a long time, the bread guy at a uh, fine dining establishment. Boulangier. I like me some bread. I like me some bread too much. Unfortunately, it's a problem now that I'm home and I'm just like, Ooh, butter, mm, bread. And I'm really good, man. That's the other thing is uh, the teaching, the kids, and uh, going to work and taking care of those animals. But then also, like, I'm home all day and like, I'm doing a lot of cooking. I already do a lot of cooking. I'm doing a lot of cooking now, which is on the one hand tasty. On the other hand, I'm getting a little soft. I think you can excuse that. I've been eating a lot of crisp sandwiches and ham and butter sandwiches. No joke. <laughs> as per as per our, our recent discovery from uh unfortunately someone Irish on Twitter who I can't recall who we started a thread where I was just like here are my favorite sandwiches and I started posting them and an Irish fellow was like hey crisp sandwich <laughs> just potato chips on bread with butter and Colbert got something up your you got something up your craw like you were offended at the idea of the butter sandwiches butter and chips butter and ham butter and I'm not sure what else goes with butter but something seems on like bread too few ingredients but what if they're really tasty bread and really, really, really good butter? If you have Kerry Gold or something, like you just have buttered bread and you're using potato chips as like a crouton, and you're calling it a sandwich. What is just? <laughs> I've also a lot of uh, Marmite on butter toast has been my main carbohydrate intake. It makes me feel better. But the bread, bread is beautiful, and I need to finish my public service announcement of how easy it is to make sourdough. Because even you were like, "Isn't it kind of complicated? Don't I have to get this and this?" And the answer is no. To whatever the objection, because it simply is flour and water. And that's actually all that's necessary. Yeah, but you want to do interesting things with it. No, 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 no. Not even the bread. We're not talking the bread. The the objection of how do I even start this? I need, I don't know what you would think you would need, but it literally is flour and water and there's yeast all over the air and all over all the stuff. All you have to do is leave it there. Just leave it open. Let it get stinky. That can go wrong sometimes. Because the the thing that you're actually doing in the wild yeast is not just yeast, but is also bacteria. And if that te- if that went down the wrong path, such that the wrong things took over before the yeast made their spot, the, it would go wrong. It tends not to, but it could happen. So that the the way you could stack them in your favor is just throw some fruit in, like dried fruit, especially would be like raisins or something, where it's got the dried yeasty stuff on it, just to give it like an inoculation. Because that's what that is, on a raisin or a grape. Yeah, man, I should get a sourdough going. I have my old one from the restaurants in the freezer, just so I can, like, break that back out again and technically still be using the same culture. Sort of technically. You see that sometimes. Where someone will be baked, like, there'll be a bread place in, let's say, the United States, and they'll be like, well, this is the culture. Like, the sourdough started in uh, Bavaria or whatever, 150 years ago. Mm -hmm. And... That is not a meaningful thing to advertise because well, once you're th- – what? I would assume types of strain of yeast would affect the types of acids or like the tanginess or different prescriptive qualities. Oh, no. Bread. Yeah. You will 100% have a special thing in Bavaria that won't be the same thing in New Jersey, that won't be the same thing in uh, Northern Africa, and won't be the same thing in Southeast Asia. But – once that thing has been living for 150 years, hell, give it. Once that thing has been alive for 15 days in North America, it has vanishingly small amounts of the things that were in it to begin with. It's the memory, Chris. It's the memory <laughs> it's not, of the Bavarian yeast. Yeah, and it's no. the, the dilution factor that makes it more potent. 
I get you're okay. So you're making like a joke. You're making a joke on homeopathy, and that's bad. <laughs> but no, I'm saying that once it's been alive for any substantial amount of time in a new place, it is no longer that Bavarian culture come a month from now. Now, the one thing you could do is if you had like a um, a clean room bread baking operation where you could bring in the culture from Bavaria and use that, then you could pull that off. But no one does that. It's not like there's no reason to do that. It would be way too much effort, except for this one weirdo on Twitter that I've enjoyed following lately, where he is, I think he's a chemist or a physicist, but for some reason, no, not a chemist. The guy's a physicist, but for some reason, he's gotten into Egyptology as a hobby and has gotten into what if we can make bread from ancient Egyptian cultures. The Egyptian wild yeast? I thought it was beer. I thought they were making Egyptian beer with the wild yeast cultures. This guy and the people with whom he is working are also planning on doing beer. But think of what you have to do to do that, right? Is if you actually use the tiny bit of yeast that you find, if you feed that on flour and water and air from right now, it will be completely overcome. Don't even talk about adding commercial yeast. Just it, the the air, the yeast in the air will completely overcome the ancient culture that you're trying to revive. And that's a cool project, right? Like we want to know what people ate, and we want to maybe experience. If that's a thing you want to do, maybe you want to experience, like, this is the food that your ancestors would have eaten 2,000 years ago. Really cool. I don't care about that so much, but I like the the idea of just pulling the thing off and what could go into it and what could we learn along the way. And so when I saw it, I thought it was just like, well, that's going to be meaningless because you, you washed it away with modern yeast. But that's not what they did. They actually did the clean room baking experiment. Like, they're making a paper out of this. This guy is working with actual people in the field. And they together are actually going to publish their results on the whole thing. And I'm looking forward to seeing this work out. He has since beginning the the project actually baked a loaf with the ancient yeast and ancient um, grains. Not like they re- they took the grains out of a pot, but like ancient cultivars that are still I'm extant. surprised when it's just like Wonder Bread. Yeah. <laughs> How did this happen? They really had this bread thing down, huh? <laughs> So the source, well, actually, you know, they have bread and it wasn't Wonder Bread. Uh, they, the source that they used to get the yeast was beer making um, containers, bread making containers, because microscopically, like these are very porous. And on top of that, just a loaf of bread, because there's a few of those floating around too in museum style, just like full on loaf. Because they're like, we're going to use a fluid solution to flush some actual yeast. Like we don't, you could like crush up this, this priceless artifact and get the stuff out probably not what you want to do so they have to convince them to let them use a like fluid solution to flush them out of some cracks in a spot on the uh the pot or the bread itself or whatever and when they got that done they still have like there's modern yeast in the air around it and there's contaminants because these things have been handed around by who knows right for thousands of years potentially and knowing like this is the culture of now uh chemically profiling what was there and trying to extract from their multiple samples, like this is the ancient yeast part of this melange of of microbes. So it's already a challenge to begin with, but once they have extracted that, they have just the ancient yeast and it is grown and cultured and ready to go. Even if you just take that and mix it in with the flour, there's still yeast in the air and they're still going to affect the whole thing you're doing. So they autoclave all the equipment, autoclave the flour. I was going to say, there's going to be flour in the yeast already. Just has There's going to be yeast exposed. in the flour, you mean? Yes. No, there's, there's so much yeast. It's just <laughs> big old piles. Yes, I didn't mean there's already going to be yeast in the flour. Yes, totally. Yeah, so they autoclave the flour as well. And then use... Um, what's the word I want? Dis- uh, distilled, probably? Distilled kind of applies a little more than that. And then also, like, cleaned, boiled water, nothing alive in there. Mix a lot together, make the bread, and totally did it. Using ancient cultivars, and literally cultured just with ancient yeast as much as possible, laboratory style, uh, the guy actually made loaves of bread. That's awesome. Victory for bread. That's a really cool thing. I'll link to in the show notes. And now they're going to do beer, too. So, fun. I I imagine they have a lot of time ahead of them working on the paper part of this research first, but still. Welcome to Bread Lessons with Chris and Colbert. <laughs> I should go eat dinner with my family, though, huh? 
How are your allergies doing? Allergies are great. The kitten's not bothering you? Couldn't be better. No, man, I've been, I think I mentioned on the show at some point that I started allergy shots and my life improved a lot. After six to nine months of it, perhaps, I'm a lot better. And we got a kitten and I can breathe them and I don't die. That's my test. So the test is, can I go rub my face on the cat and how much does it harm me? And the answer is it doesn't harm me very much. If I rub them in my eyes, they'll get itchy, but I can rinse them off. It used to be like, that's the end of my night. If I rub my face on a cat, I am now out of commission until tomorrow. So that's a big improvement. Is that the same for all the outside irritants? Pollen? Depends. But I'm also allergic, apparently, to trees and grass and just everything that's outside. So yeah. Yeah. The problem is now that we're in this isolation thing, um, my allergy shots are postponed for some number of weeks. So I will have to reset slightly. Some amount, unfortunately. It is a setback, but still, still I'm much better than my baseline. And if this is already pretty great. So if I have even more to go where I'm going to be even better, I can't wait to just be breathing all the time. I'm going to breathe so hard all day. <laughs> well, no, no, I won't. I'm going to breathe really easy. So is this, <clears throat> are your allergy shots tailored for you? Yes. Okay. So they do a scratch test and then they get a, a concoction based off of that. Yes, indeed. Um, the rabbit was the one thing I wasn't allergic to, which is like, great. So I can smell the rabbit. He smells pretty good when he's outside, but everything else in my life, trees and grass and kids and dust and, uh, cats and dogs. Both I, I think the are, kids are just, that's more of a <laughs> stress reaction. <laughs> the, the bumps for the cats and dogs was like huge. So imagine like the stress my body's under all the time in a, in a world where I'm just surrounded by cats and dogs, which is, ha- which has been my life for decades. And so, yeah, they gave me the test first, and then they concocted my serum. I think that's what they call it. And she holds up the one bottle. She's like, I would give this to you now. You're going to go into anaphylaxis and die. We're going to work up to this one. The one she held up is the one I'm on now. Is she threatening you? Chris, you're going to do a thing for me. <laughs> and I can give you the antidote. But man, I'm, I'm like, I'm, the, I'm on the penultimate, I think, serum uh, concentration by the time this, this disaster happened so we'll see how i do after whatever has to be set back but i'm close the thing that if injected into me a year ago would have killed me is now on the horizon as just i'm doing this on purpose so doing that with poisons too build up your tolerances so you can win at a game of <laughs> wit with uh with someone else <laughs> with the <a> sicilian <laughs> yeah. i can't remember what episode we just talked about poisons recently but apparently for most of them that's not how it works you mean you mean the adage whatever doesn't kill you makes you stronger it doesn't doesn't exactly work with poisons. It doesn't work for a lot of poisons. I mean the dose is the poison, right? But some of these things are like lead or arsenic, where any amount at all is definitely harmful no matter what. You want to avoid those. It's funny is our our understanding of those over time where we don't realize that's the case. Like as you go look in the ancient world, and be like, wow, they realized lead is bad. It's just like as long as it's not too much, it's probably okay, right? And that is the kind of thing that could slip by for centuries or millennia until you're like, wait a minute. Well, I mean, people can live until they die of something else and not realize the <laughs> deficits that they have. Yeah. And like you, the ancient world might not have had the, the demographic and testing data in cities to be like, look at these lower test scores in combination with lead paint type situation. It turns out there's no safe amount. Like we didn't know. That's a pretty recent, uh, that's a pretty recent realization. And we talked, and whatever it was, episode that we talked about the poisons, the Victorians were all putting arsenic and stuff, right? It was the movie Evolution that we covered. Duchovny joint. Yeah, we talked about how people poison themselves to, for multiple effects. A lot of it is cosmetic. Yeah, like we know this is deadly. We're just still unconvinced that lower amounts are harmful as well. So now it's makeup or, uh, you know, it's like lipstick or something terrible, whereas it's definitely getting in my mouth. So I have gravy. You have gravy? It's been a long time since I put that on the stove. So that was, I was a bit too miserly, I think, with my food stuffs for the past week or so. As I was just making bread and eating peanut butter and jelly, for the most part. Oh, man. I need to eat more peanut butter and jelly. The problem is, I'm feeding all these people, and Grandma Judy's here as well. But now you can't <clears> get <throat> peanut butter and jelly, because they're all sold out. Well, I have peanut butter and jelly. The problem is just that like, I keep making real food and having lots of real food to use. Yeah, and that's better. So I look at the fridge, and I'm like... I can't just leave these leftovers to go bad. No food has gone bad on my watch in these few weeks. That's how it, that should be the default. But 
I could just look at this and be like, leftover chicken, or I could eat peanut butter and jelly for breakfast and lunch. <laughs> like, <I'll> be... <laughs> and I want to. And that's it. That's our update. That's our coffee conversation that we didn't normally have and that we just had with the internet. And Usually there's more tech stuff because it's at work. Everyone should be grateful that I didn't come to Colbert with them facts today. Oh, man. Yeah, we've been talking about like multiplexers too. That's pretty... It's pretty high up there. Oh, you forgot to list Tmux as one of my enthusiasms. Okay, Colbert. Woo, this is the end of the show. Not about movies or TV, but just about some stuff. Because I can't take life. Or not. Hey, did you see Tales from the Loop is on Amazon Prime? Video? Nope. Tales from the Loop. Remember the... I forget where it's from. The Scandinavian fellow who was doing those weird alternative world 1980s with like robots on the horizon and stuff? In the Swedish countryside? No. Oh, it was Sweden. I just realized. No? No. You'll know what I mean if I showed you one. Anyway, there were popular just paintings of things. It was cool. But uh, it looks like it got optioned into a show on Amazon Prime Video, and now uh, it's a whole thing. Oh, okay. Anyway, that might be that might be a good thing for us. I don't know. I haven't seen it yet. But yeah, end of the show. Thank you. So that's the end of the show. Normally, we'd say support your creators online. I think that's still a good idea. I think in these tr- in these troubled times, we still need artists to make their art, like us, who are artists. Yes, art. Making art. Art. <laughs> yep. Art, art, art. It's in the eye of the beholder now. Exactly. Well, dude, some people think our stuff is important enough to keep uh, keep giving us money, and I really appreciate them, and I want to say thank you. We have a new supporter. Larry is new. And we'd like to say a special thank you to Larry for coming on board of all times right now. So maybe he's one of the only people who's actually still listening to podcasts at this moment because everyone else stopped commuting. Everyone's downloads are down. It's so easy just to, if you are still working, just be like, wake up. Oh, I got to go to work in two minutes. Yeah. And my routine is not to listen to stuff I have to actively pay attention to while working because that is hard. Yeah, no, that's, that's not the same. No, it's my two hours or so or more really in the car every day. That is my research and idea time with podcasts or audiobooks or whatever. I'm just not doing it. And so our people. And I'd like to thank everybody else as well. Joe Ferraro, Louis the Blazing Firework, Alan Michael Pools, Dean at LSG Media, Andy P. at Bash 25 Comics, Terrence Lee, Software Interface Enthusiast Hugh Fisher, Chris Gennard, Larry again. Thank you, Larry, for coming on board. We'll get to know you a little bit because we don't know you yet. Either what kind of positive or negative nickname you would like. <laughs> or not like. Also, Brian, the Texas Brother Peterson, Andrew Capitol of the Mighty, Jeff Armish Waterman, Michael the Giantus Peterson, Samuel Mumby, Igor Smonsky, Josh Evan G of LG Media, Mr. Reagan Curly Phil, Tim Sikkim his arms wide, John Dwaris, Matt Creek, Gino Lomolino, Adrian Mahale, a dinosaur hunter, Arcobia FF Joe Ruppel, Scotty M. Scotty doesn't know how to make a sourdough culture. It's really easy. It's called flour and water. Maybe a grape. It just sounds like you have a pile on your counter. Just like a grape sitting in flour and some water on top. <laughs> Pretty much. You just nailed the recipe. Also, a ladder Ron, the Star Lord Adam Piper, Jerry the Top Poster, Carmelita Valdez McCoy, Grandma's Boy Friedrich R, Donnie Migliori, Bug Eater Luke Pelly, Alaric Dirk and Gunnar Superhero, Daniel Days Barker and Surgeon Principal of the Podcast, Adrian Falcone of this podcast sometimes, John, Champion of Beavers, DJ Moffat, and my mom and Grandma Judy, and uh, and Magical Unicorn Jolene Creighton. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Especially during this time when you totally don't have to do it. And I'd even encourage anyone who is experiencing hardship now, like, probably take care of that first, before the podcasts and the Patreons and whatnot. But nevertheless, thank you for being here all this way. It'd be crazy. And that's the the moral of the story this week. (laughs) You don't think it'd be like it is, but sometimes it it do. (laughs) (laughs) Yes. Damn.